In this video, I want to talk about playing sound from a console application. So someone in class today asked if that was possible, and it is possible if you're on a Windows machine, um, but we're, we're kind of edging into the territory where you would really be reaching for some tool that already has an audio engine in it, like um, maybe you would switch over to Unity and, and leverage the audio tools inside of Unity, or you would move over to a Blazor application where you can use the audio tools inside of uh, the, the browser, use the web audio APIs. But for the sake of completeness, I want to do a demo that uses the sound player class. So this lives in the system.media namespace, and we're going to have to bring in um, system windows extensions to be able to use this. And again, big caveat, you can only do this on Windows because this is a, a Windows specific OS thing. Um, and then if I come down to the remarks section, we can see that the sound player class provides an interface for loading and playing wave files. It only handles wave files and also it's only going to be able to do one wave file at a time. So you're, you're kind of going to be in a situation where you could put some background music inside of your game or you could play a sound effect, uh, but you can't do both of those things simultaneously. So the way this is going to work, if I fly down to the constructors, is um, we're going to construct a sound player and give it a string, which is the path to our WAV file that we want to load. So if I flip over to the constructor here, I can see we pass in the string location. Um, it'll throw an error if it can't find that sound. So this is going to um, construct a sound player for us that we can then use. And if we scroll down to some of the methods, we can see there is a load method for loading a sound synchronously, load async for loading a sound asynchronously. There's a play method for playing it. Um, and then there's a play looping method for um, playing it and having it loop when it finishes. So we're not really going to be doing the asynchronous version of these methods. We're going to use the synchronous version, which means when we call load, the whole application is going to pause while that sound is loading. So if it's a huge WAV file, your console app might halt for a while. If you want to dig deeper, you can look into the asynchronous way of loading things where you essentially tell the sound player, go, go do your loading logic, and then let me know when the, the sound is ready. But we're going to stick with the synchronous version. So we're going to load our, we're going to create our sound. We're going to load it. And then um, back here, we're going to either call play or play looping. And then at any point in the future, if we want to stop that sound, we can stop that sound. And one other thing to point out while we're on the documentation here is you can change which sound is loaded using the sound location. So if you wanted to create a sound player, um, that played different sound effects throughout your game, you could load different WAV files as you enter different rooms by changing the sound location. Okay, so I'm going to have a starter project here available that you can download from the description. It is just a .NET 5 console application that doesn't do anything other than display some ASCII art here um, and that has some credits underneath it. And we're going to play some spooky music um, that I pulled from YouTube Audio Library. So up at the top, I have a checklist of things that we're going to do. We're going to download a WAV file that we have permission to use. So check, we got that from YouTube um, under Creative Commons license. Then we're going to bring that WAV file into our project. So you can drag and drop, or I'm going to show you how to add an existing item through the menu here in Visual Studio. Uh, we're going to make sure that that gets copied over to our build. So once we have that file in here, we'll say, make sure that this gets copied over into our final build and we'll install the system windows extension via NuGet to make sure that we have the windows specific um, DLL to actually run the sound player. So I've got some other links here, some places where you can find free music um, that you could use in your game legally. These uh, you, specifically, you gotta find WAV files for, for that. I've also got a link for a tool that can help you shrink your WAV files because WAV files tend to be pretty large um, generally. Okay, so let me delete the WAV file that's in here. And if we wanted to add a WAV file, I could click on my solution here, 
come down to Add, Existing Item, and now I'm going to change this dropdown to allow me to see all files. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I have a copy of that WAV file. So I'll click it. Now it's in my project. And down here I want to specify that this should be copied over to my output directory. So here, if I click Copy Always, that means that anytime we build this application, this WAV file gets copied over next to our executable. So now that I have done 0, 1, 2, it's time to make sure we have system Windows extensions installed via NuGet. So if you haven't watched the video on NuGet, go ahead and do that before um, doing this part. I'd, you'll get an introduction to what NuGet is and, and how it works. Um, so I'm going to fly through this quickly. I'm going to go to the NuGet package manager, Mac manage uh, NuGet packages. I'm going to look for system.windows.extensions under Browse. And I can see it here, provided by Microsoft. Go ahead and click that. Click this. Install it. It'll take a second. Uh, no errors, so it's all good. It's all set up in my project here. I can close down NuGet. And now we can start coding. So the sound player lives inside of the system.media namespace. So I can say using system.media so that I can use any types that are in system.media without having to put the fully qualified path in here. And then at the top of my main function here, before my graphics, I'm going to do my uh, sound player logic. So because this is something that only works on Windows, you wouldn't really want to build this application uh, without doing some kind of check to make sure that we are on Windows before we try and play a sound. So if I were to try and say, like, I'm going to create a sound player, let's call this spooky player, set it equal to new sound player. And remember, the constructor takes um, a string for the sound location. And so because this WAV file is going to be at the same location as my exe, uh, we can just say fun underscore house dot wave. Fun underscore house dot wave. So as I type this, I am getting a warning here that sound player is supported on Windows. Um, so this is where we kind of want to do a conditional check. If we're running this application and it's on an, a Windows operating system, let's go ahead and um, create the sound player and run it. But if we're not, then we shouldn't do this because this isn't supported. So if we build this as an application, a console application on a Mac to target a Mac, this would break. So what we can do is a quick check. We can use the operating system uh, class, which has an is uh, Windows method. It also has methods to check if we're on Android, browser, iOS, etc. So here we're going to say is Windows. That's going to give us back a Boolean, which will mean that it's safe for us to create this sound player. So here that warning has now disappeared because we have done our operating system check. So we created our spooky player, then we can say spooky player dot load. This is going to halt the program momentarily while that asset is being loaded. So our, our WAV file is not huge and we're not doing a real time application. So this doesn't really matter, but the asynchronous stuff, that would be things to look into if you're doing a lot of this and you're loading big sounds. So here I'm loading that sound, and once that has loaded, we can either call spookyplayer.play or we can do spookyplayer.play looping. So play is going to play once and then it'll stop. Play looping will kick it off playing and continue playing um, indefinitely. So now if I make sure that I've got desktop audio set up, let's give this a play. And hopefully we got some spooky music.
So a couple of notes as we're wrapping this up. There are, um, let's see here, a couple of things to point out. So there's play and play sync. Um, play sync, this will play your sound synchronously, which means that it'll actually block the thread, prevent anything else from running until the sound is done. So you probably don't want that in your console applications. Uh, things that would be useful, stop allows you to stop a sound from playing. Um, if we check out the method, uh, the properties again, there's the sound location. So you could use a sound player to load one wave file. And then when you're ready to play the next one, you could change the sound location call load again. So using a combo of these properties and methods, you could set up a couple of different effects inside of your choose your own adventure game if you wanted to bring audio in. And just to, to bring home that final note, I'm gonna paste in a comment here that the, the sound player class can only play one sound at a time. So you can use it for like background ambient music throughout your whole game you, if you want, or you could use it to create short sound effects that play at different points in your game, like a sound, like a spooky, like rain sound when you enter a part of your game that is outside and then like a different, um, like a uh, footstep sound when you walk inside, like you could use it for small sound effects as long as none of them overlap. Uh, because you cannot use it to do both, uh, to do multiple sounds simultaneously. But that's all there is to the sound player class. Remember, it's Windows only. Um, so if you're on a Windows machine, feel free to bring this into your projects. If you're not, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but you can look into Blazor for um, playing sound.